Good evening, I'm Wes Huey. What you've learned about leadership is probably fine. It probably earned you a bonus or a promotion, but it didn't probably tap into the transformational power of leadership because I think to do that, we have to ask a particular question. Let's ask, where is leadership? Through our history, we thought of leadership as located in great men. We've thought of it as located in a position or a title. And recently, we've thought a bit of, of it as located in the relationship between leader and follower. I think it's somewhere else. Let me explain. Humans that look like us have been on the Earth for about 20, 200,000 years. We've been talking to each other for 60,000 of those years. That little sliver on the right, that's what we know as AD, the common era. In other words, we've only been living in a society like we know today for about 3% of our existence. So what does that say about our, our, about our habits, about how we think and how we get along with each other? Might we have some bad habits? Let me see if I can point one out. If I gave you these three numbers and then I told you to give me three more numbers that match the rule, you might say 8, 10, and 12. And then if I said, yes, those, ma those numbers match the rule, you'd say, well, the rule is counting up by two. And I'd say, that's not my rule. And you'd get confused and you'd say, well, how about 14, 16, and 18? And I'd say, those numbers match my rule. And so now you're getting frustrated and angry. And you say, well, what about one, three, and five? And I say, those numbers match my rule. But until you give me a set of numbers like six, four, and two, you're no closer to the answer. And so then you'd say, oh, now I get it. It's ascending, numbers in ascending order. And I'd say yes, and then we'd high five each other because the light bulb came on and that was really hard. So what's going on here? Well, it's called confirmation bias. You see, we as humans actively set out to prove what we already know rather than try to figure out why we might be wrong. And that has significant implications for learning. Here's another example of confirmation bias. Who in this room sees a young woman in this picture? Who sees an old woman? Which of you see both? So let me ask you this question. If you didn't know that both images were present, how likely would you be to look for that second image? Again, another example of confirmation bias. Here's the inconvenient truth about our minds. Our minds evolved in a world in which information was very scarce. And even when we organize that information into, uh, into knowledge, very few of us thought about it. So this has tremendous implications for our ability to learn and our habits surrounding learning. So remember that red sliver I showed you a second ago? That's the x-axis on this graph. It took us 1,500 years to double our knowledge. Today it takes us less than 12 months to double our knowledge. Soon it'll be less than 12 hours. So we better be ready to learn. Here's the good news. Some of us humans have seen this coming. And have given us clues about how to prepare ourselves. In other words, how to lead. One of those humans was Rudyard Kipling, who wrote the poem If in 1895. In my view, it tells us, as only a poet can, where leadership resides. He says, if you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you. If you can trust yourself when all men doubt you and yet leave allowance for their doubting too. If you can wait and not be tired by waiting, and being lied about, not deal in lies, and being hated, not give way to hating, and yet don't look too good, nor talk too wise. I think Rudyard Kipling was telling us that leadership is about a mastery of self, about mastering your mind, your passions, and your spirit. Leadership, ladies and gentlemen, resides in you, all of you, and me. The task of leaders is to try to do our best as a, as a collective society to master ourselves. Where I work as the Chief People Officer at Skyline Technology Solutions, we believe passionately that every one of us is a leader, from the founder of the company down to our newest new hire. And we believe it's all of our responsibilities to develop ourselves uh, as best we can, develop ourselves in terms of our learning, in terms of our growth, in terms of our technical capabilities. And we do that in the context of a safe environment in which we're all allowed to fail because after all, we are frail and we are flawed as human beings. If we do that in an environment that's safe, then it's, it's a much better place to be. So if you believe as we do that leadership 
is a, a matter of self-management, and you believe that our world needs us all to lead, to learn, and indeed to love, then please, let's start a conversation. Thank you.